Well, good morning, everyone. Whether you're in the chapel uh, or whether you're watching on Zoom or whether you are watching on a later date on YouTube, uh, you're very welcome here this morning and it's good to be with you. And I'm Pete Lloyd and I'm the minister. As always, for those people who are on Zoom, if you can remember, please to stay on mute. And if you do have to leave the meeting for any reason, to remember to mute yourself when you do uh, come back in. Let's just be quiet for a moment. And I want you to spend just a moment thinking about the week you've had. And then I want you to lay it at Jesus' feet, to thank him for all those good things and uh, to remember how he's helped you through those more challenging moments and to put everything at his feet. Lord Jesus, we do thank you that you've been with us throughout this last week. We thank you that you've lifted us through challenges. We thank you for all the wonderful gifts, the wonderful things, the moments that we have experienced in this last week as well. And we lay them all at your feet. And we pray that now we will be able to listen to you to let go of the last week and just to listen to you. Amen. I'm going to listen to a song. It's a short song. You, uh, I think you'll probably find it very difficult to not to sing, but it is uh, one we all know. It's Hosanna, Hosanna.
loving Father God, we do lift up your name in praise and we worship you. You are the living God, the Lord God Almighty. And we bring you our praise and our worship today. And we pray that our hearts will be open to know and to love you more and <clears throat> to hear your words to us today. Amen. Here's a question for you. Do you do your best at everything? <laughs> you know, there has always been that thing which has tended to be aimed at men, that if you do something badly once, you're not going to get asked to do it again. And I think as a teenager, that was certainly pretty much in my thinking about some things. It's hard to admit that with my mum sitting here. But... Um, but uh, th there is that, but do you do your best at everything? You try to. Yeah, there are no some things where you don't, you don't just think, oh, I'll just, I'll just do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, do you know, when, when I was at, 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 sec at secondary school, I w it may surprise some of you to know that I wasn't very good with my hands. And we had to do a craft subject for uh, O-levels, as it was then. And I remember my mum and dad saying, well, look, you've, the, the, the woodwork teacher is almost retired because of you, and the metalwork teacher isn't much better, so why don't you give pottery a go? And the hard thing about pottery was I gave, I did my best, and I was pretty useless. But... I want to show you this. In four terms of doing pottery, I managed to bring home three things that were completed. The rest never really got very far. But this is the only surviving thing that I made in pottery. So this is circa 1978. And it is an original Lloyd pot. In fact, it is the only surviving Lloyd pot. And I did my best with this. And actually, do you know, it's not too bad, is it? No, it's a coil pot. And, uh, and I think my pottery teacher was, was very relieved, shall we say, when, when, when I managed to make that. However, after four terms, he did request that I no longer did pottery and that I did extra work in other subjects instead. But do you do your best for Jesus? You know, when a um, uh, story in the Bible, which we're going to look at later, and Jesus was there with a group of people and in came Mary. And uh, Mary came in with this expensive uh, anointing of Jesus and she she poured it this perfume over Jesus and it was the best she could do it's the most expensive thing that she could give and she gave it to Jesus the very best that she got she did for Jesus and she knelt, knelt down and she dried his feet with her hair and Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, says this. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. That whatever we do, whatever we do, whether it's dusting, whether it's cleaning, whether it's our daily job, we should be doing it as if we're doing it for God and not for human masters. And that sometimes can be very difficult. If we're doing it for God, we should be doing our very, very best at everything. And people will notice. Let's be quiet for a moment. And perhaps I want you to think about things where you don't do your best. And you don't think about it as if you're doing it for God. And it may be today that there are some things 
that you know you need to work at because you are doing it for God. And you want to ask that God will help you to do your very best for it. Loving Father God, in all that we do, help us to remember that we're serving you and help us to do our very best, even if it's something that we don't particularly enjoy. But may we remember that we're doing it for you. Amen. Um, just a couple of things before we have a time of prayer. One is... Um, Next Sunday, and this is really important, next Sunday, we are joining with the Baptist Assembly. They're having a, a, a service at the back for the Baptist Assembly uh, online on Zoom. And, but it is at 10.30 a.m. So not what has been our regular time of 10 o'clock, but next Sunday only will be... 10 30 so we can join on zoom with the baptist assembly so if you join zoom at 10 o'clock and you're thinking what's adam doing you know why isn't he letting me in why am i stuck in the waiting room it's because it starts at next week at 10 30 and i will be in here in the in the chapel uh, and i will be enjoying it with anyone else who uh, wants to watch it on the screens here in the chapel but it would be good to be joining with um, Baptists from all over the country, Baptist churches from up and down the country will all be together as one enjoying that service. So that is next Sunday, 10.30 a.m. I will put it on the WhatsApp for those who, are, um, who have WhatsApp. And Karen has got a couple of things she'd just like to mention. Morning. Um, good to see everybody. Um, so there are at least two things to mention. Now, I'm really excited about the shoe boxes. Um, just getting word out slowly, and I know I'm collecting a few bits as time goes on. If anybody wants more information about collecting for the shoe boxes, please ask me, and I'll pass that on. But I read the other day that they also take contributions of knitted or crocheted lap blankets. So not massive bed blankets necessarily, but just the smaller ones that you might put around your, if, if we were sitting in church and you were feeling a bit cold, you might want a lamp, not that we're going to feel cold in church now. No, um, I know I have a lap blanket at home. <laughs> Um, so if anybody felt they'd got time on their hands and wanted to knit or crochet, that's a good place for it to go. You might have other places, but I'll mention that one. Um, that was the shoe boxes. Something else, I know. So as the restrictions are starting to ease, we're looking forward to the day when more of us can gather and we can be in the paddock and just do more of what we do. Um, but there are a few benches in the paddock that are looking a little um, sorry for themselves. And I've wondered whether there might be anybody who would like to help paint them. They need rubbing down, washing with turps, and then I've got the paint or some paint. So I'm just putting a, a word out there if there's anybody. I know the people that have always done all the jobs, but I just wondered if there's anybody different that might like to help. <laughs> um, I know Janet and Carol have done a fantastic job in the schoolroom recently. Um, but yeah, um, th that's another job if anybody would like, has any spare time and the weather's good, obviously. Um, and then the third thing, my fault, I forgot to bring the photograph, but the barrel that we collected money for has gone to Zimbabwe this week. Woo! So thank you to everybody who contributed. That was fantastic. Just done. Lesser Sophie's got that all sorted, so thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Yes, apologies about the temperature in here this morning. I watched the weather forecast yesterday and I thought from that it was going to be warm today. Uh, and so I thought, well, there's no point in putting the heating on, but I really wish I had. Because, uh, but uh, never mind, never mind. Okay, well, we're going to pray. And I think bearing in mind, uh, remembering the talk we had last week from a lady from um, Open Doors, I would like to be praying for churches around the world. Uh, we've had local elections this week, but there is quite a significant vote in Scotland, which could affect the whole of the United Kingdom. And I think we need to be praying for God's will to be done in that. And uh, I th there are countries around the world which are really suffering with COVID. Uh, India, obviously, being one of them. But someone was telling me as well that it's very similar in Chile which I haven't heard on the news, but uh, we do need to be praying for, for these countries. So let's pray. Father God, we, we just want to praise you and we thank you again that we are free to come and to worship you. That we can worship you and it can go online and we can worship you in the chapel with the door open. And we are free to do that because we live in a country where, uh, where we are it, freedom of speech, freedom of religion is valued. But we do know that there are many countries around the world where that isn't the case. And we do want to pray this morning for countries around the world where to worship you can mean death. And we think of North Korea and we think of parts of India, and we think of um, uh, other parts of this, this country. I think of Finland this week, where somebody put something online, and, uh, and then they were um, in trouble because they had put a Bible passage online. And it may be that that's a country where things are beginning to tighten up. Lord, we just want to pray for Christians all over the world that whoever they are, wherever they're worshipping, in whatever circumstances they're worshipping this morning, we pray that they will be so aware of your presence and your grace for them. And we do thank you for the faith and the courage of those who live in countries where they are persecuted, but they still worship you. We pray to you this morning for other countries which, where they're suffering badly with the virus. We think of Chile, we think of India. Lord, we pray that the enough vaccines will reach the right places. And we pray that as a world, we will unite in fighting this virus. And we pray to you for this nation of ours, Lord, we love this nation. We long for this nation to be a, a truly Christian nation once again. But we think of what happened in the vote on um, Thursday and how it appears we may be breaking up at some point in the future. We just ask that your will be done. We ask whatever we may believe to be the best thing, we ask your will be done and in these moments now of quiet we want to bring our own prayers to you So, Lord Jesus, we lift these prayers to you. We ask that you'll hear our cries and that we will serve you in the things that you call us to serve you, recognizing that in some things you may wish us to play a part. 
we ask that we will always do the best that we can for you in serving you. Amen. And uh, Janet is going to bring us our reading this morning. Well, Peter has already challenged me this morning. Do I always do my best? And I don't think I probably do. Not if I'm tired or something else. But we used to sing a hymn when I was a child. And it said... Who sweeps a room as for thy sake makes that and the action fine. The man that looks on glass on it may stay his eye. Or if he chooseth, drew it past, and then the heavens aspire. Lord Jesus, give me grace on earth to seek thee more. In heaven to see thy face and with thy saints adore. Now, I can't remember what the first line of that hymn is. And if anybody else can, I would be very grateful. Because it keeps coming into my head for weeks now. And Peter's reminded me of it now. But now I'm going to do my best to read down a bit Is that better i'm going to do my best to read from john chapter 12 beginning at verse 1 six days before the passover jesus arrived at bethany where lazarus lived whom jesus had raised from the dead here a dinner was given in jesus honor martha served while lazarus was among those reclining at the table then mary took about a pint of pure nard an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He didn't say this because he was cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he'd raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to, to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and putting their faith in him. And we thank God for his word to us this morning. Amen. Thank you, Janet. So we've been going through John's gospel. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, if you remember, we, um, we were looking at the part <clears throat> where... Um, after Lazarus had been raised from the dead by Jesus, um, th things had been, people had been split because some were thinking, wow. And as we just heard, because of Lazarus, people were going out to, to, uh, to follow Jesus. But there were others who said, wow, this man's raised people from the dead. We can't have that. And they'd gone off to report him to, to the authorities. And so they decided to kill him. I, I still find that just incredible you know I cannot imagine how hard their hearts were that they see this incredible miracle something that they will never have seen or experienced before and so their response is to say we can't have this we're going off to tell the authorities but that's what we were looking at a couple of weeks ago and then we we have this and this is this is, the first part of this is so fantastic isn't it so wonderful where mary comes in and she tips this pure nard over jesus and she anoints him and we're told in verse three that she um she took about a pint of pure nard if we can have verse three up please adam and uh and she wiped his feet with her hair and, you know, it, we, we're told that it was um, about a, uh, a year's salary for someone. So say that this was worth, what she did was pour over Jesus, something worth about £25,000 in today's money. Can you imagine that? 
you know, the best that she had got, the most expensive thing she would have had, and she poured it over Jesus. And then we're told uh, in 1 Corinthians 11, 15, she, you know, she, she wiped his feet with her hair, and we're told that um, if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. You know, the, 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 the most, perhaps one of the, I don't know, one of the most beautiful parts of a woman, her, her hair, her long hair. And that is what she used to dry Jesus' feet. I mean, this was an absolutely incredible thing that she had done. And we're told uh, in Matthew 26, verse 10, in that version of when she did it, that Jesus says she has done a beautiful thing. You know, Jesus is, is mightily impressed with this because this is someone who shares his mind. She knows what's going on. She understands what's going on. She understands that Jesus is not going to be around much more. And so she anoints him for, for his death. And how does she know all this? Because she has sat at Jesus' feet and she has listened to everything that he has said. She has soaked it up and she has let it change her heart. You know, there, there is that story where she's sitting at Jesus' feet and her sister Martha says, hang on a minute. Jesus, tell her she needs to be up helping me. And Mary is prepared to put Jesus and listening to him before the wrath of her sister. She is soaking up everything that Jesus says while she possibly can. And so she has the mind and the heart of Jesus so that when she anoints him with this nod, he says, she has done a beautiful thing. I think it's fair to say Judas was not in the same place. You know, in verse 6, we're told that uh, he, did not, he did not say that he has a go at her. He says, why has this, hasn't this perfume been... Uh, sold and the money given to the poor it was worth a year's wages he did not say this because he cared about the poor but because he was a thief as keeper of the money bag he used to help himself uh, to what was put in it now I want you to think about Judas for a moment because the thing that we remember most about Judas if we said to if I said to someone what can you tell me about Judas most of you would say straight off he betrayed Jesus but I want to look at what else Judas did. Because Judas had walked with Jesus for three years. Judas had seen Jesus feed the 5,000. He had seen Jesus walk on water. He had seen Jesus heal people. He had seen Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. And there had also been a point where Jesus anointed all his followers and sent them out. And Judas would have been one of those. Judas had been on the mission field. Judas had gone out and in Jesus' name, he'd cast out demons and he had healed people. He had done all the right things except let Jesus into his heart and change him. Now, this is a really important point because it is, it is possible to do all the right things and yet not to let Jesus into your heart and to let him change you. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I don't need to change. But, you know, we all do, because none of us are the finished article. We are not. And growing as a Christian is a daily thing. And we may have things which we actually don't want to change and we want to hang on to. Do you know, I'm going to, conf I'm going to confess to something now. I've developed a habit in the last few months that gives me great satisfaction 
but he's wrong. How, I don't know how many of you are used to driving through Liddington, but when I drive through Liddington, I do come a lot, it, it's quite a difficult village to drive through because you've got, it's quite weavy and you've got cars parked everywhere. And, and I've got, I, I see people, sometimes you wait and you let the car come and they just drive by. And I, I've developed this very sarcastic, childish habit of as, as they've gone by, so they can't see me going, it's okay, no problem. I know it's childish and it's horrible and it's sarcastic and I should not do it. And, uh, but it gives me satisfaction for a moment. And part of me is probably thinking, yeah, I want to change, but I don't want to change that because they jolly well deserve it. And it's wrong. It's wrong. Because, do you know, when I read this passage, I realized I want Jesus to look at me each day and say, Pete, today you've done a beautiful thing. He's not going to say that about me being sarcastic. But that's how I want to live my life. I want to live my life where when I pray at night, I just sense Jesus saying, Pete, today you've done a beautiful thing. Can you imagine the joy that would have been in Mary's heart? when she heard Jesus say, she has done a beautiful thing. And the joy that Mary would have lived with because she soaked up everything that Jesus said. And my guess is this is not the only beautiful thing she would have done in her life. She would have done many because she soaked up Jesus. She let him in. She listened to every word that he said. She had no limits on what she would do for him. And he's told her she had done a beautiful thing. Do you know, I think at the moment, a lot of people out there are looking for hope. Karen was walking through the village the other day and she bumped into someone and he noticed that she was carrying a magazine and it said on it something about hope. And he said something like, oh, I've got no hope or there's no hope for me or something like that, jokingly. But I think it probably wasn't completely a joke. And a lot of people are looking for hope. Where are they going to find it? They're going to find it in Jesus. And where are they going to find Jesus? For many of them, they'll find it in our hearts when we do a beautiful thing. Do you want to see this church filled with people worshipping God? Because they have found the beauty in Jesus. I do. And you know, I want to live my life with Jesus saying to me, Pete, mate, you've done a beautiful thing today and you know if we all live like that the world will change what do you want i'd like you to be quiet for a moment and it may be today you want to say <clears throat> you want to ask jesus jesus to show you where you haven't let him in where you've done the right things, but you haven't let him in. It may be today you want to ask him to come in deeper because you want to serve him and you want to do things where he'll say, that is a beautiful thing you've done for me. Maybe you want to ask him to show you where you resist.
and maybe today you want to say lord jesus i'm really sorry but i, I haven't let you in where I've held on to it. I'm really sorry for where I've been content with who I am and what I am instead of letting you come in and shine for me all the more. Because I really want you to. And I want people to see your beauty in me. It might be you want to say, Lord, I am afraid of that. But I do want it. Amen. Adam, if you can play those two songs now, please. The first one is a hymn which I love, and it's almost a prayer. gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give he is my joy my righteousness and freedom my steadfast love my deep and boundless peace to this I Oh, by my side, the Savior, he will save. 
So, Lord, as we go now, we pray you'll bless us and draw us closer to you. And we pray that your light will shine in us, that you'll fill us with your peace and give us rest tonight. For your glory. Amen. Thank you all very much. And uh, don't forget, next Sunday is 10.30.